Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm addressing some very common questions I get regarding gaming equipment, specifically scuff controllers and control freaks, and if I think they're worth your money. So let's just get right into it with control freaks. So first of all, what are control freaks? Well, there are these little extensions to your thumbsticks that do a number of things. The way they've been advertised since the beginning is that they will help improve your aim. Basically, because the thumbsticks are extended, small motions will be more precise, thus improving your aim. I will say, I think the difference is very minor, and this certainly isn't the main selling point for me. What I really like about them is that they make the thumbsticks much more comfortable. To me, the standard PS4 thumbsticks are really uncomfortable, and same goes for the Xbox One thumbsticks. With Control Freaks, you can get exactly the type of thumbsticks you're looking for. They've got a bunch of different variations, both short and long sticks, domed and concaved, etc. If you don't like the base thumbsticks, Control Freaks will have a solution for you. Another major thing that Control Freaks do is protect your controller. The normal thumbsticks wear down fairly quickly, at least on the DualShock controllers. And Control Freaks protect the thumbsticks. They're much more durable than normal thumbsticks too. Uh, I've had mine for about two and a half years now and they've barely even worn. And even if they do break, they only cost a little more than $10, which is very affordable. So in case you can't tell, I really, really like Control Freaks. I've been using mine for two and a half years now, as I said, and I love them to bits. I cannot recommend them enough. As a matter of fact, I recently applied for a sponsorship with Control Freak, and if you're interested, you can now use the discount code CHRIS. You can see it on screen too, there's no H in there. And then you can get 10% off all their products. There will be a link to the website in the description of all my videos going forward, if you're interested. Shameless self-promotion, I know, but trust me when I say I would never indulge a product that I don't like myself. I cannot recommend Scuff or Battle Beaver controllers on the other hand. I've never actually had a Battle Beaver, but I do have a Scuff, and these custom controllers are modern versions of the base controller, where they've added anywhere from 2 to 4 buttons in the back. These buttons are usually mapped to Circle and X, or in the case of Xbox users, A and B. So you can jump and slide without taking your finger off the thumbstick, so you can aim while jumping and sliding. I'm not gonna lie, this is absolutely awesome to play with. It makes things so much easier, especially for people like myself who find clawing very uncomfortable. But these controllers have a number of problems. First of all, they're pricey. The entry price for the Scuff controller is around $125. I'm not sure about Battle Beavers, but one thing's for sure, a standout controller is so much cheaper. Additionally, these controllers tend to have issues with durability. Both of the paddles on my Scuff controller broke within the first four months and Scuff's customer service is quite honestly not very good. I don't have any personal experience with Battle Beaver, but I have heard quite a few negative things about them too, especially regarding their customer service. And the thing about these controllers is that they make you dependent on them. They're very, very comfortable and make things so much easier for you, but when they break, which they do pretty frequently, you're in trouble. Getting used to the normal controllers again takes a while, and thus many people find themselves just buying a new Scuff controller. You can of course choose to send it back for repairs, but depending on where you live, this could be more expensive than just buying a new controller. So in the long run, they can cost you a lot of money. As I said, I used to scuff, but after the paddles broke, I refused to buy another one. Instead, I decided to come up with an alternative that didn't require a custom controller. And as it turns out, it is possible to have all the utility of a scuff while using a normal controller, even if you don't like clawing. At least it is on PlayStation, I'm not entirely sure about Xbox, but on the PlayStation you can make custom button assignments. So how do I run my controls when I play Destiny? Well first things first, I use the button layout called Bumper Jumper within the game itself. This allows you to jump and aim at the same time, one of the utilities of the scuff, but sliding is still on the circle button and that's where button assignments come into play. So as you can see on screen here, I have remapped circle to the right thumbstick. The right thumbstick, which is melee normally, has been remapped to R1, essentially the same as the default loadout, and lastly R1 is remapped to circle. On Bumper Jumper, R1 is normally used for grenades, but this way that's moved to circle. So this way you can slide and jump while aiming just like you can with a scuff. Melee remains in the same place as on the default layout. That's my personal preference, I feel like I need to be able to melee more quickly than I need to use grenades. My grenade placement does suffer at times with this setup, but that is really the only drawback to it. But most of the time I find that you do have enough time to line up a grenade throw anyway. So that's a very minor drawback. And I definitely think that one downside is worth it considering you don't have to rely on an expensive modded controller. And you can of course also make button assignments for other games. I use some button assignments for Titanfall 2, basically again moving my slide onto the thumbstick. And you can do the same thing for Call of Duty or for Battlefield if you need to. So essentially you can have a, not custom control, but you can have a custom button layout for every single game you play. 
and that's all using the normal PS4 controller. And that's only $60, probably even cheaper these days due to how long the PS4 has been out for, so you save a lot of money doing this. So that's my two cents on Control Freaks and modded controllers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and I will catch you guys next time.